Monday afternoon, 4.45 p.m. approximately, September 22nd, 2003. Speaking is Detective Frank Kwiatkowski, Erie Police Department. Off camera is Detective John Holmes of the Erie Police Department. Off camera is uh, Attorney Gene Placidi. If you could acknowledge uh, being in the room, Mr. Placidi. Yes, Gene Placidi, uh, 502 West 7th Street, Erie, PA 16502. Uh, who is representing uh, on camera Mr. William Rothstein. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you're age 59. Your date of birth is 11744. Social Security number 19632-5625. That's correct. All right. Uh, I'm gonna, at this at this point, I'm going to uh, read you your rights uh, in regards to a homicide investigation involving uh, which stems from calls you made to state police yesterday or the night before, uh, which gets the whole ball rolling. Uh, through your, through your attorney, you've agreed to talk to us. We're going to read you your rights first. Uh, if you can read along with me. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you are being questioned. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you without charge before any questioning if you wish. Should you decide to talk to us, you can stop the questioning at any time. Uh, Mr. Rossi, there's two questions. First one, do you understand the rights I have explained to you? Yes, except for one thing, there should be a D after that word used. Okay, anything you say can and will be used Please. against you yes. in court of law. Well, there's a typo error there. Okay. Okay. Uh, the first question, do you want me to reread re these no. rights? No. All right. First question, do you understand these rights I have explained to you? Yes. Okay, if, you, if that's your answer, will you put yes in your initials there, please? Second question being, having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to us now? Yes. And if you will put yes in your initials. And then sign there. And Mr. Placidi can also sign that. <coughs> Mr. Rothstein, uh, we're conducting an investigation along with the state police in regards to telephone conversation you had uh, the night uh, before Saturday night Saturday night first in which uh, you initiated uh, calls to the state police uh, could you explain what that was all about okay that was basically uh, there was a person I had known since uh, the late 60s or early 70s used to date <laughs> She had a body in her house that she wanted to remove. I helped her with it. Uh, we, I put it basically in my garage. <coughs> Excuse and me, sir. At that, and that Saturday, she wanted it completely destroyed. Okay, the woman being Marjorie Armstrong, or Marjorie Deal Armstrong. Marjorie Deal was her maiden name. Marjorie Armstrong, Armstrong was her married name. Okay. And that's why you called the state police? I would call the state police because I did not want anything to do with that. And I was also fearful of what would happen to me <coughs> should she find that out or should I refuse to do that. Okay. How long have you known Marjorie Armstrong? I've known her roughly 30, 35 years. Okay. And briefly, what was your relationship with her? Uh, we went together, I think, and then we got engaged like the first year engaged for about like nine months and then after that uh, I didn't talk to her that much. Uh, she would call me occasionally but it got to be uh, that she has emotional problems and she would ask me what to do about different items and then she wouldn't listen to me and I got tired of hearing her go over these things all the time. So I basically developed a situation where I just didn't contact her unless or would not speak to her or talk to her unless I had information that would help her about 
uh, bipolar uh, problems, which I think she had, or her teeth, or something like that, and I kind of tried to stay away from her as much as possible. I did not physically see her. I tried to avoid her phone calls as much as possible. Okay. Now, we talked yesterday <coughs> out, of state, out of the state police barracks. Uh, myself, Detective Holmes, another state trooper, Schaefer, I believe is his name. Yes. And uh, we have some conversation there where uh, you provided answers to our questions. Uh, how about if we go back about a month or so ago where uh, I think you indicated to us yesterday that you first got involved with Marjorie involving the death of this uh, Mr. James. Uh, you want the death or do you want the burglar alarm stuff before that? Remember I told you about the break-in and I went up and you don't want to hear about yeah, well, that? Well, yeah, you, you mentioned that. Uh, okay, you're not interested in that. Yeah, yeah, well, okay, let's, let's go back. Uh, I think you told me yesterday that she told you what she thought had happened with this guy that she found dead in her house. Okay. And that she had told you about an incident that happened previous where somebody allegedly broke into her house. Is that is that what that was about? Sort of. You want me just to do it? Just give me a brief synopsis okay. of what she told you. Uh, supposedly she had been broken into and some guy took uh, money from her that was in her purse. She notified the police. The police didn't do anything. She called me up to ask me what to do about it because I had like electronic electrical knowledge. And I suggested she burglar burg alarm her place, and I took a look around, and I said, cut down some of the branches so people can't get in. Because supposedly the guy that came in the window, she filed a report on this, supposedly the guy that came in the window tried to kill her with a knife. Not just grab her purse, but kill her with a knife. So she was in fear for her life. Her boyfriend had been upstairs because they're not allowed to live in the same domicile. So there's two domiciles, there's upstairs and there's downstairs. She was downstairs, the guy came in through the window supposedly. You can check your report for whatever she said about that. So I told them what to do for a burglary alarm or place, I gave her a load of suggestions, I called up Clark Electric. Okay, just a bit. Let me ask you this, yes. Anything that you know about this uh, alleged robbery or theft, and this is everything that Marjorie told you, Right, except what I'm telling you about what I suggested to her. No, no, that I understand correct. that. that correct. Anything about that incident, this is just what Marjorie told you. Correct. You got it from no other source. That is correct. You weren't there. That is correct. Uh, do you know it, the, the people that she believes was involved in this, in that theft or robbery? Do you know the people that she's naming? Do I know them like personally? Do you no. personally know? No, I just know of them from her. Okay. I have never seen any of them. She mentioned, she brings their names up. You don't know them. Correct. Okay. So this, after she tells you this, you give her advice on how to burglar her house. Right. Okay. Supposedly they had cut the telephone, so I said, you know, go through a wireless system, et cetera. Right. Go ahead. Okay. I spoke with she and Jane Roden, or Jim Roden, whatever his name was, about what to do, and I said he could cut down some of the low-lying branches so it wouldn't be so easy if neighbors could see something if it happened and somebody tried to break in again because she was supposedly in fear of her life. Uh, and later on I found out that somebody had cut the branches, I am assuming it was he. When she, okay. how did she contact you to go over there and take a look at her house, the burger proof it? She probably called my house and told me she had been robbed. I don't even remember that for sure. Okay. If, if, I, if I threw out a a date or a time period like the end of May of this year. Does that sound about the right time? Uh, if you know. It could have been like, assuming that, that uh, the demise of, of James Roden was... I'm talking about the incident. Yeah, I know. Murder. I'm just trying to go back. I have to have something to pay. I can't tell you like that. Okay. Uh, if it was like two months ago, so then it was probably like almost three months ago from now. And this is uh, September 22nd or 23rd, so we're talking uh, 7 July or 8, 7. It would probably be like July, I'm guessing. You think the latter happened. part of July. I think in July. All right. Right. Okay. Uh, and that'd be two months ago, July. Right. Okay. All right. Then it would have been, okay, it would have probably been last year. You can check by seeing if there is any report yeah. or 
you can check with Clark Electric and see when they sent out their uh, sheet to her, because they did send her a sheet on what the, uh, the okay. price would be. That's nice. Right. So she told you about this intruder? Correct. All right. Uh, but she told you about this, did she call you or stop at your house? Oh, she would have called because I wouldn't let her into my house at the time. All right. Now, when you come to her house to look, look the place over, uh, you mentioned Jim Rogan. That's her boyfriend who lived upstairs. Right. Uh, is that the first time you saw him? Firstly, yes. I had seen a picture of him in a paper. She called me up one time and said something, and I saw a picture in the paper of him walking from the, the pier, South Pier, or something like that. But that was the first time I saw him in person. Okay, that was the first time. Uh, when would you have been at Marjorie's place on East 7th Street prior to that? I don't think I ever was. I may have, I took her out, I think, maybe like 10 or 15 years ago, but I don't even remember where I picked her up from. I might have picked her up, but that was like 10 or 15 years ago. All right. So after, after you advise her and uh, Clark Electric, I think... Wait, wait a minute. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Do you ask me when was the last time I was at her house, or when I was when I saw her there? Well, when you we went there and uh, you were okay. advising her, okay. I asked you when before we were there that. before that. Okay, last all right. That. There was uh, probably a two or three months before that. I pulled some stuff off the internet. She has a problem with uh, TMJ with her teeth, and she wanted some information on bone replacement. So I looked up some stuff on bone replacement on the internet. I copied it off and I dropped it off in her front door. And I don't think she was there. I just dropped it off her door and left. So I was there probably two or three months before I saw she and Jim Roden. Okay. When was the next time you would have been there after that? After the, okay. After when you advised her about how to burglarize, murder-proof her place. The next time was when I went over there and she showed me the body light on the bed of Jim Roden. Okay. Then what we'll do, if that was the next time, then we'll back up. How did you hear from Marjorie Deal Armstrong about a problem she had in what in, in concerning this uh, deceased person? Okay. I'm, as I said before, I'm not exactly sure on the timing of the thing. She may have called me the day of or the day after or maybe two days after. I'm not really sure. Uh, I didn't answer the phone. I think she said something like she had a problem, or this is what she always says, that she has a problem. And uh, so I did not talk to her. I don't think I talked to her until she finally came over to the house. So she called you, and maybe a day or two later she, she came might have to the called house. a couple times even. I don't know. She might have called even three times. And then after that, sometime within one to three days, uh, no, I think she told me before that she called me the night or the morning that it happened, but I'm not really sure. I don't recall. I kind of just like whenever she calls, I just if I'm in bed lying in there, I just roll over and just leave the, the recording go. And if, if I wasn't there, and I came back and I got it. I just erased it. Do you recall specifically what was on that recording? No, it's that's at the time when I was like, you know, don't bother me with this stuff because I went over there and had done stuff for. Did she mention? A dead person on the messages. Not on the first one, and probably not on the rest. I think when I found out about that there was a dead person there was when she came over to my house. Just okay. that she had a problem. That's what she said on the messages. Call me. Well, call it was probably more than just a problem. It was probably something. Well, I had something really bad happen to me, or something indicated it was like really bad, and I should call her. But you know, that's like okay. she does for everything. Okay. When Marjorie finally came over and saw you in person. Was anybody else at your house? I don't think so. If there was, he was in a separate room and he wouldn't have heard anything. But I, no, he wasn't because she came into the kitchen. And that's a person who's been living with you for a period, of, a short period of staying time? Staying with that. Staying with Yeah, staying with yeah. What's, what's his name? Uh, Stockton. Uh, shoot. Jay's his nickname. I call him Jay all the time. I can't remember his first two names. Yeah. Would you get Leroy? No. How about no. Floyd? Floyd. Floyd. Rock Floyd. Stockton. Floyd Stockton. I'm oh, sorry. I'm just used to calling him Jay. Okay. Okay. It's a friend of yours that's been staying with you for, with you for about a year? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So he wasn't there, and she and she was out there, and so when she could, 
Can I use the word I actually use in front use of the actual word? Okay. I said, what the fuck do you want? Didn't want her over there. So she says, and I don't remember exactly how it went, you know, when she talked about something bad happened. I don't think she told me until we got into the kitchen, which was like, you know, through one room. And at that time she said that Jim, or somehow she indicated that Jim was dead in her house. Uh, well, how did she indicate she was dead? He was dead. I mean, she told me, but I don't know the exact words right. that she said. Okay, and I'm sitting there, and I'm kind of like in disbelief, like, oh, I, you know, I don't can't believe this stuff. And uh, so then I generally got the idea she was telling me the truth, and and I, I'm not exactly sure how this went. I think she probably asked for help, and I know she went into like histrionics, which is basically like, oh, she leaned back in the chair and said. Nobody can help me. You're the only one who can help me, or something like that. And uh, I, you know, I, I didn't think obviously. I thought about it, but I didn't think obviously the way I should have. And, and I finally said that I would take. I think I said I would take a look, or something like that. Well, when she told you that Jim, or Jim Roden, is is dead in her place, right? Then you ask her, well, what happened to him? I don't remember for sure. You don't remember? I don't remember. She might have told me. She might not have told me. I think she just said he was dead, but I, I can't be sure of that. All right. Okay. Did she ever tell you at any time what had happened to him? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Is there something else you want to no, we'll, further we'll, with now, or no, you want to we'll, get right we'll into get, that? No, we'll get into that shortly if you want. <laughs> Do you want to get into it now? Okay. We'll get into. I don't remember when it was that she has told me this, but she has told me a few times that because Jim was supposedly responsible for her losing the money due to the fact that he introduced her to these other people who she had been hanging around with for seven years, and she was never able to find out what these people were like. And Jim introduced her to them, and they were like buddy-buddy. They used to go out fishing, and she considers that, and she feels that anything that happens is somebody else's fault, no matter what it is. It's somebody else's fault, never hers. What are the, what are the people's names that, that Jim introduced her to? If you know, a woman named Aggie, okay, who I think lives on, you want to know that, Levin Street. I think she probably gave you the information. A woman before. named Agnes. Agnes. Yeah, she calls her Aggie. Okay, like I think somewhere around East High School. I think she's okay. on Eleventh Street or, or Seventh Street. Well, okay. Uh, somebody named Ken. Did you ever hear Ken's last name? I may have heard the last name. It might be Rogers, but I don't know. If you guys gave me a name, I might be able to remember it, but I do not really remember. You ever hear the name Ken Barnes? Oh, you asked me Barnes before. I no, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's that Barnes. Okay, that's okay. fine. Uh, and then there was some guy who was a biker. Now, either Barnes or the biker or the Barnes and biker worked on one of her places doing some remodeling and. I guess she thought it was great or somebody else thought it was such great work that they did. And I think eventually she told either Ken or the biker that uh, she didn't want them around because she thought they were doing drugs or something. I guess he had like, you know, red eyes or, or yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed that. They did work for her? Yeah. Okay. Remodeling. Okay. But I'm not sure if it was like on Bacon or if it was on... Before, I mean, we're talking a while ago. Right. Before the supposed incident of the break-in. Okay. 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 Uh, now this this Ken, although you don't recall his last name, did you ever know where he lived or about where he lived? Yes. Uh, she described the place. I went down there to take a look. Uh, it was like close to East High School. I can't actually tell you the street that was on. It's off of uh, 6th Street. It's off of 6th Street. It goes south. It's a building, I, I'm not sure if it's the building or it's just close to that, and it's a brick building with a guardian security sign on it. And he supposedly lives down from that and had a pickup truck, because I think she knew this guy Ken from going to the uh, food lines. It's the street's close to East Avenue? Yes, but, but it was parallel. Okay, I think it's like the block before John's Barber, is that Perry Street? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. That's that's the general location of this camp. Okay. And these are the people that she, that uh, 
she we're introduced that, to her by this Jim Roden, and, and yeah. she holds it against him yeah. because yeah. she does she feel that they're responsible for her theft. Well, she feels that they're responsible for her theft, and since Jim introduced them, he is also responsible for their theft. Although that may not have been the thing that caused his demise, that is a great factor. Did, in it. did she ever indicate the amount taken during the theft? Yes. What was the amount? Somewhere around one hundred and thirty-three or one hundred and thirty-six thousand dollars. Explain that to them. Okay. She had, there was a court, uh, there was a, a suit against uh, St. Vincent, I believe, and her husband, her past husband, had died at the hospital and supposedly there was a gag order, so she wouldn't tell me what there was for money, and, and she got money and she didn't have to pay any taxes on it, so legally this money was hers and she kept it in a purse. She slept on that purse. So supposedly, these guys got that amount of money, which was like somewhere around 133, 136,000. What did she report? She reported something like $800. She was gonna buy a bear. The bear is now at my place. Uh, she reported $800 stolen? No, no, I'm not finished. I'm sorry. Uh, Eight hundred dollars for the bear, and I think two or three thousand dollars beside that. So I think she gave them, the police, the sum of like twenty-eight hundred or thirty-eight hundred dollars that was missing because she didn't want anybody to know about this, whatever it was, hundred thirty, oh, hundred plus thousand dollars. Eight hundred for what? A bear. Do you, she said where Padano's was is, Padano's up on uh, 18th Street. Yeah. Right. Remember the bear that was out in front. That bear. Oh, a stuffed type bear? No. Carved out of wood. Oh, carved out of wood. Okay. Out of wood. I didn't know. Yeah, okay. I hadn't seen Big it. statue. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the amount of money reported to the police was 2800 or 3800 plus the, the, the bear? No, 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 no. Not the bear. The, the $800 was for the bear. For the bear. It okay. was just the money plus her I'm purse sorry. plus the keys, everything that was in her purse. Okay. But she told you they actually got her for $133,000 or $136,000. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, she still had more money left. Now, don't forget, she did not tell me, because of the gag order, how much money there was. Well, she eventually told me, I think, that it was like $150,000. And I had done a bunch of stuff for her and helping on the court case before, like advising her and she wouldn't tell me how much it was. Did you ever see any of this money? Yes, I did. I ended up with a bag of it after the 133000 You ended up with a bag of it? A bag of it. In addition to the hundred, you say. And that's different than the $2,000 that you indicated to us yesterday? Right. A 20s right. in yeah. a band? Yeah, that was actually part of it. That, 2, that was just part of the bag? That was part of it, right. Did you ever count the money in the bag? Uh, we did, but I don't remember what it was. It was somewhat similar to like 60000 or something, or somewhere close to 60000 I'm not really sure what it was. I counted it in front of her so that she'd know what was there, because she didn't know what she had. Okay. So now we know who, why she blames Jim Roden because of these people that she suspects of stealing her money. Jim Roden sort of like laughed. I guess Jim Roden was a relative, according to this, according to what she said, was a uh, relatively, uh, had very little money, he was like a, uh, a, uh, a daddy that doesn't pay his bills and took off, and there was court stuff out for him from, uh, I think, of Ohio. So, and anyway, so what he did was, I guess, maybe this is the thing that sort of pushed her over, but it wasn't the, the end of the thing. He laughed because she had lost her money, and maybe she thought that, uh, that it was because he didn't have any and she lost hers and maybe it made him equal or something like that. I don't know, that's some position. But anyway, I think that was another factor that pushed her into uh, murdering him. She said that she murdered him somewhere on a night or morning, I'm not sure which, that I indicated before that his, his demise was. It was a dark and stormy night. She mentioned something Those are her words? I murdered him? 
Right, kill no, them. that's not, I don't know what her exact words were, but that is what she said. You understand what I'm saying? She indicated that she had murdered him, or that she had killed him. But, of course, it was because he deserved it. Because she doesn't make, you know, everybody is, somebody else is always the person that deserves it. But she tells you that she murdered him or killed him, this is when she came over to your house. <clears throat> she told me that when she came over to my house, that time that I indicated she came over to my house, and I said, what the fuck do you want? Right, okay. That was the time when she told me about that. Right. I, she, no, that might not, that might not even be true. I'm not sure if she said she murdered him at that time or not. I, I think she did. I think she did because that's when she went to histrionics, like, you know, what would happen to her, you know, because of what happened before and I was the only one who could help her. So I, I'm pretty sure that's when she said it, but I I can't tell you for sure. Well, when she told you there's Jim's dead in her house, you must have asked what happened. I don't know if she just told me. She probably, you I, you guys didn't hear her talk, she probably just spouted it out and that's what it was. That's what I'm saying now. No. Okay. Uh, so your, your recollection is she either said I murdered him or I killed him? She indicated that she well, How did she indicate? She, didn't, she had to <laughs> she say it. She told me. I don't know. I don't know how she said it. I don't know if she said she killed him or if she shot him or she wouldn't use the word murdered because that, that indicates somebody was murdered. You know, she has to have a reason for it. Uh, Just tell me what she said. I don't know. I don't remember. She indicated to me. It's like when Skindell said something this morning to me and, all I, and he remembered exactly what it was and all I remembered is what it meant to me that he was gonna, you know that he was going to be a hard asset because I was being a prick okay it's I remember what was what was indicated but I don't remember the exact words if I sit down to remember the exact words maybe I can but I mean not I couldn't do it now or anything yeah did you say I killed him and here's why she has told me afterwards why she killed him okay although she may not have, or she may have indicated it at that time she has told me after afterwards that you know that it was his fault and that's why she shot him and things like that. Okay. But I don't remember at that time how it went down. Okay. At some point she did tell you that she shot him. Yes. Did she tell you again at a later time that she told you this on a couple separate occasions or just one time? A, a few times. A few different times. Yeah, but when you she don't remember she, exactly when. Probably the last time was on Thursday of this past week or something like that. We were out, right, because we would go for a ride, and she'd ask me what was done in the house and tell me, you know, she was in a hurry for this and she's in a hurry for that, and did I feed her cats and dogs and take care of things. And let let me ask you this. Ahead. Okay, may or may not have told you the night she showed up at your residence, mm -hmm. but do you remember exactly, do you remember definitely what the first time was she told you this? No, that might have been, the, that was probably the Say, first okay, time. Okay, again, may or may not, but how about the next time? No, I mean, it was like she's told me probably three times at least, but I don't know. All I know you is... You remember the last time? I remember the last time. Okay. Okay? Okay. All right. Go ahead. So she's at your house. She, she indicates... Okay. She, the, she needs them. help. So yeah. I think I said I would go over and look. I did not indicate that I would do anything. I think I said I'd go over and take a look and see what the situation was. Because I wasn't, I wasn't really sure if she was getting anything. She's just asking you for help at this time. She's not. Did she spell out what kind of help she needs at this time, or she just says help me? I think she said help me. All right. I think she should let you. You agreed know, to I go to her house to see what's going on over there. I don't know how soon I went over there. I don't know if I went that day or if I went that night or if I went a day later or two days later. I don't remember. All I know is I remember I did go over there, and it probably was maybe that same day, but it could have been a day later, and I saw, and I was pretty sure it was Jim, although I could could tell from the back because his face was facing that way. He, I'll draw you pictures later on. You don't want pictures now. That's right. Go ahead. Okay. He was lying maybe like uh, crosswise across the bed. There were two things that looked like blood stains on the bed. He was on top of a gray cover, gray bed sheet, a gray cover on, on the bed. And I saw two stains off. He was in a semi-fetal position, which was kind of like Mm -hmm. His legs were taken out, and up here on the bed, I think, is where I saw the two stains. You believed it to be Jim Roden? Yes, because he was the only one who was there, as far as I knew. He was the one who was living with her for, I think she said, maybe 12 years or 7 years. You guys probably have That was his room. Right, because he wasn't allowed to live with her, and also because they didn't get along that well. The, the stains, blood stains, they were on the sheet itself? 
that you recall the, the bed gray spread, sheet, the, the bed spread, the yes, gray sheet, right. which you're calling yeah. bed spread. And she had told me she had shot him in the back somewhere along the line. She said she had shot him in the back. But when, as I told you, when I saw his body lying there, I think he had a white T-shirt on. I do not recall seeing anything that, that would have put like holes in his back. But maybe, maybe because it went in as like pellets or something that came out exploding. I don't know. I don't know for sure. And I didn't see his front. You remember her face. saying that she shot him in the back? She has told me she. Because I asked her. I said times after that. I said, how the hell did you kill him? You know, where did you shoot him from? She said. She shot him from the foot of the bed is here, and she shot him from like this side, this direction. He was laying in bed when she shot him? I think he was sitting up. I don't, I think maybe they were having an argument, and that's when she shot him. I don't know where she got the gun from. I don't know if she went downstairs and pulled the gun upstairs, or if the gun was upstairs. I, I don't think she's ever indicated to me, or if she did, it wasn't anything that was <coughs> Did she ever show you a gun? She showed me a gun. She, I think she brought it over. I don't think I took it over to my place. I think she brought it over to my place and asked me to get rid of it or something like that. I put it under my bed and I left it there for a long time. And she, and did she, she brought, tell you this is what she shot him with? Uh, I don't know if she said that or not. I assume that. She brought over a box of shells. There were 22 shells in the box, which means there's three missing. So. And I saw, I think she said she shot him twice, or pulled the trigger twice. 22 shells in the, in the box. Shotgun, Shotgun shells. shells. What did I say? You said 22 shells. He oh, said... Sorry, 22. 22 of them. 22, no. yes, yeah, so no, 22 12-gauge shotgun shells. Okay. Okay, she said she had shot him twice. So when I started to dismantle the gun to get rid of it, I said, I'm not going to start cutting this gun up until I check it. So when I pulled it back, and I guess you guys said it was, or maybe the PSV said it was an automatic, because there's a little thing that sticks out like this, you pull back. Yeah. And I saw the shell down there, so I just kept playing with it until I got the shell out to get rid of it. So there was one live shell, one shell that was not fired, still in the gun? Correct. And two missing? Correct. To make 25 total for the box? Right. Did she ever tell you how many times she shot him? I think she said she shot him twice. That's, and so I think she said that before I started to pull the gun apart because that's why I was looking when I counted 22, sh 22 the number of 22 shells in the box that there, was, there was one missing. Well, we're talking about the shells. Yes. Did you ever find the shells that were fired? Yes. Where did uh, you find them at? I found, I think she had one and destroyed it. I found one and gave it to her because she wanted to destroy it. And it was sitting and there was a, uh, some kind of shelving apparatus and when I was cleaning up things it was just sitting upwards like this with the, the shell casing down or the uh, shell head down here and, and the other part sitting up here just like as if it landed on here like this and so she got rid of that. Where was that in relation to the bed and yes. Jim wrote it? Can yes. I borrow your paper here? Yeah. You didn't want a bigger piece? No, I want this piece. If this was the bed, No, 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 I don't want that. All right, if you need it. If this was the bed here this is where the stuff was, where the shelving was where's over here. Where's the foot here. of the bed at? This is the foot of the okay. bed. This where's the, the where's the window or air conditioner? Right even. about here. Mid well, right. okay, use that. Somewhere around. Yeah. Well, this is much bigger than that. I'll just draw you where. Yeah, we we'll draw. Lay out the room for us. That would make it look easy. Well, part of the pro no, not really. Part of the problem is I don't remember how it is because it's been changed so All many right. times because I did the stuff. Okay, if this were the bed. There was a couch over here, and you know, there's, there's knickknacks and junk all over the place. If this was the wall, which I think it was, the air conditioner was approximately here. Okay, and she's supposed so the entrance to the bedroom is where? The entrance to the bedroom is over roughly here. There is, I'll just draw a door, but okay. But there was no door. Okay. Okay. That's where the entrance is. That's where the entrance is. This is the bedroom. This was up tighter. This had a, a box type head on it. And this, I think, was up against the wall. And were you guys over there yet or not yet? Okay. You saw the sloping ceilings. Mm -hmm. Sloping ceilings go, I think, to roughly over to here. Mm -hmm. From here. These walls had 
three rugs on them. They're staple holes, uh, uh, staples, not staples, uh, small nailed brads or something like that that held these uh, carpets, which were like picture carpets on here. Those are presently, along with almost everything that came out of here that wasn't destroyed, is up at the 8645 Peter, or was until you guys got there. I don't know how much you pulled. Also, the mattress, which was on here, there was only one mattress, is at 8645 Petrie, or was, and the rails were destroyed along with the headbed here. The, so the, the walls on the, the rugs on the wall and the mattress is up at no, the rug, the rugs were on the ceiling. They weren't on the wall. Uh, the slope slope ceiling, rugs right? Right. Off right. Ceiling. right. Okay. That's okay. Not, that's now right. there may have been. I'm not sure if there was one off to the side here. There might have been one on the on the wall there. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Go ahead. Back to my question: the shell casing in regard in okay. regard to the bed. Shell case. There was some kind of a. Now this was after <coughs> things were moved, but I don't think this was moved because if it had, the shell would have been gone. There was this kind of thing like this. You'll see that up at, at my uh, 8645 Peach Street place. The shelving there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's this like. Unit. Okay. You want me to just draw it like this, and that's sufficient for you guys. And the shell. This has like little. Uh, three-quarter inch uh, pieces of wood going across here and this is like the top set of the shelves right through here it was sitting maybe like right there just sitting up there okay you remember the color of the plastic yeah red red, red. Okay. it's uh winchester number six shot two and three quarter inches long I bought a box of shells, and I think I told you guys that I bought them because I was going to try them out in the gun. And the reason I bought them is she didn't know that I still had the original shells and had not gotten rid of them. So we went over to buy a box of them at uh, Kmart on, uh, I went in and bought them, at Kmart on uh, Summit Plaza. So in the, in the van you will find a box of shells if you haven't already. Unopened, I think. Or at least unshot. This was the couch. Okay, we. Okay, well, I, I got the. I know where the casing okay. was, etc. And uh, that's right. That's right. That's right. You said she. You said she said she destroyed the other one that was spent. She fired twice. Both were you're right. And then you eventually gave her this other one too to get rid of because she wanted. I showed it to her because she wanted to find it. Okay. And, and, I said, and here it is. So she wanted to get rid of it. So I said, okay. She took it. Yeah. I mean, you don't know what she did. Well, I, I think she told me she threw it away someplace, but I have no idea where. Okay. No place that I recall. Okay. All right, we'll back up a little bit now. When she, uh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, since he started with the room, why don't, at this point, just identify what's at his place. He's already said that there were carpets that were along the slope the ceiling. Right, those are there. The shelving is there. Everything that was in here with the exception of things that were destroyed. The things that were destroyed were the carpeting, the uh, some of the uh, vinyl uh, flooring, some of the things I moved over into the kitchen because the kitchen, this was here, this is like the, the basement stairway. I can't draw it because I already threw this stuff. There was here was the entrance to over to the kitchen. So some of the things I just pushed into the kitchen so I could do some work over here. Anything uh, else destroyed? I got carpet, some of the vinyl flooring, the bed rails and headboard, anything else he took to the landfill that basically had uh, recoverable, just, uh, as far as objects that were in there. The, uh, the uh, air conditioner, I, I changed the air conditioner because she wanted a different air conditioner in case there was anything on it. So I put a different air conditioner in. The, air conditioner, the air conditioner was up at 8645 feet Street. Okay. When I say is, that means it was before you guys got there. Okay. Oh, I understand that. Okay. All right. So that went out there. Uh, there were uh, Venetian blinds on here. I threw those away. There was a, uh, a shade. I threw the shade away, replaced the shade. I filled the holes, but the holes is, I checked for, for, uh, for shotgun holes, you know, the shot shells. And it, I don't even think at the time, oh, I think I figured out what it was. 
for the size because I pulled one of the shells apart and found out it was like a number six or something. But I didn't see anything, you know, that was there, but there could have been, you know, the shot could have gotten around someplace. And I think she pointed downwards or something. I, I, he was sitting at one time, so if he's sitting on her bed, he's probably going to be up about this high. So I don't know if she was like standing up and shot him or she was still pointing down. I can't, you know, forensics is going to be able to You said you didn't see any shot, meaning small pellets anywhere Correct. throughout while Correct. cleaning. Correct. Okay. I, okay, what I wanted to do was, I think he did it for us, was to tell us what you disposed of at the landfill or got or threw out. Oh. And, um, and you said carpet, uh, vinyl flooring, Venetian blinds, the shade, any other items that got disposed of. Dead rails, headboard. Head, yeah, yeah rails I went through that. Head. Yeah, okay. There was one other thing I think of. Now, I may have thrown something else out, uh, but I, I'm pretty sure that's it. That, that came out of here. I've thrown other stuff out. Besides. There was a uh, there was a patch in the floor there. Did you see the patch? The wooden. The, yeah, the plywood. Yeah. She was sure that there was blood on the board, so I threw those out. And replaced it with that patch. Plywood, yeah. Now there's items that, if that's all that you've thrown out, if you can remember. If you remember right. something else, tell me. But if, right. So I understand that certain items went to your place and certain items went into the kitchen. Right. Okay. No, 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 no. Everything went into the garage, except for the bear. The bear just came out this past week. Uh, the bear went into the living room because it's on a dolly right now. I use my dolly to carry it into there. And uh, some of the stuff I dis partially disassembled because it was like really heavy. There were like cabinets, rolling cabinets for like stereos and stuff. And some of the stuff was garbage and she wanted to save it. Uh, but I think I've told you everything that came out of here that's in the garage. I don't think, I think there was only just that one, no, I take that back. There was some other stuff. Uh, there were some boxes that I took out that had blue glass. I guess it's supposed to be antique stuff, and I think like there's one or two boxes of those in the living room also. That, that of stuff, your place. Yeah, room. right, okay. right. And I basically put those in there because I just didn't want to, do any kind of work in there with those things around there. So everything that was in that room, okay, you indicated items that were thrown out. Everything else ended up in your garage or your living room. Or or, or the kitchen or the kitchen in that place. Because some of the stuff I put in the kitchen. Okay, that's what I wanted just to separate. What, what, I, what I put in the kitchen? You've identified what went to your house. That's and we'll just say the rest. Yeah, of but there's the so much shit up there. Well, <laughs> Okay. Well, when we go there, we, we want to have an idea of what we're looking for. Okay. And I, All right. I can t almost, have, with, with the exception of like maybe one of the rugs and maybe like one or two of the pictures, everything's going to be in a black plastic bag, I think, that I took up there, except some of the bigger ass stuff that's on there. And we'll go up there. Okay. I just want to get a quick idea. All right. Uh, Let me ask you about the uh, uh, stairwell going up into the okay, second that's floor. Sitting, that's sitting up at, my, at the 8645 Peach Street. Because when I was doing the painting and stuff there, I, it's nice varnish and I didn't want to get it messed up. And it was easier to roll the stuff, so I just took it off and put it up there. You, the stairwell, you were talking about what's being rolled up. That's all I want you to explain when you said you redid the stairwell. Painted it. Painted. The carpet came off. You took carpet it off the stairwell. The carpet off the stairwell. Okay. Uh, how about blood was underneath the car? Underneath the car. That's what I was going to tell you. In case it was blood or something, I would wash it down. And some of the stuff that I took out as steps and replaced the steps, they were cracked, but they may have also had blood. But when you say you replaced steps, actual wood parts? The, the uh, flat portion, not tops. The top right, of the step. Right. I think there were like eight of them or something like that. You can tell because there's a little bit different round to them than the other steps. Uh, they were all cracked and fairly close to the... Uh, and those pieces of wood from the top of the steps, the eight or, eight or so pieces, where are those? Where are they? Those were probably in the, in the, in the dump. In the dump, yeah. Okay. We're going to go up there. You can point out what's at okay. the nice bench. Okay. How about, one more thing, uh, the ceiling fixture. Okay. Did you do anything with that? Yeah, I took those things off because I wanted to paint in close to where the fan is and when some people paint they just leave the, the plastic escutcheons on and paint over the top. I dropped those down and took those off so that I could do the uh, painting close to the uh, where the, where the uh, 
fan is a paddle fan, okay? Yeah. That's why it's like that. I put the paddle fans off to the side. Okay. You were up there, you didn't apparently you didn't complete the painting job. No. Well, she kept changing her priorities. All right. And then, uh, did you do anything else besides painting in that in that upstairs room or going into the hallway, going towards downstairs with any type of cleaning solutions or chemicals or anything like that? Yeah, probably cleaned up the stairs with the uh, hydrogen peroxide. I don't think I did much of that. I don't think I did because I didn't think there was much on it. But I replaced the steps, so, so I wasn't really concerned about that. How about up in the room? <sighs> Spraying any hydrogen peroxide or? I dropped some hydrogen peroxide uh, off to the side of the bed. She thought there were like blood stains there, and I said, it's not blood stains, it's just coloring on the vinyl and stuff like that. And she wanted it, uh, uh, so she wanted it on there, so I just put it on there. All right. also, I also <coughs> put some into the kitchen, because she indicated that I had taken them into the kitchen, and so I should, and that he probably bled there or something, so I put some going out of here. Where are we at? Going on. Okay, from here, I probably spilled hydrogen peroxide around there. Uh, on the stairway, I, I spilled some down below here. Uh, you may find that there's, there's still a load of stuff there. I have no idea. And I also, she wanted me to put hydrogen peroxide because she mentioned something about for animals, because the, the way the door was at the basement, or down at the, at the bottom here, you couldn't, if you closed it one way, you couldn't get out and stuff like that. So when I went to work in there, I just had set it up so you had a couple of hook and eyes so that you could close the door and keep the animals in there. But when she was there, I think the animals went upstairs and she was afraid that some of the animals had stepped in the blood and had gone downstairs. And some of her animals- Tracked it around the house? Yeah, some of her animals had problems. You know, blood problems in her stool and stuff. You can see like real watery stuff and it was like red. And so they were actually doing Did the you work. go in through the downstairs part of the house and spray any I, chemicals or cleaning agents yeah. around? Okay, I put some stuff in there for the smell, but what you're referring to is I did in the vestibule, in the front vestibule there. By the front door. By the front door, I put hydrogen peroxide a couple of times. So you did go into the downstairs? Yeah. Oh, the, the other part, yeah. yeah. Marjorie's part. Okay, sorry. All right. Yeah. All right, let's, now that we, you've outlined what you've done in, in the house so far after you went over there, let's back up a little bit and you tell us how you ended up doing all this and what help did she ask you for and uh, what did you talk about, what you would do and how and to accomplish it. I don't know how we got into that. I think she just wanted things camouflaged or, or covered up and destroyed and stuff like that. And I don't really remember how we got into that. When she came over there and asked you uh, or told you about Jim being killed or he's dead in her, her house and uh, needed help, uh, you said there was like a one to three day delay in going over there? Or I think so. I okay. think so. I don't think I went over Did right she, away. Had she asked you at that point uh, that we need to that she needed to get rid of the body, and was that delayed because you had to go pick up some supplies or things that you would need? No. You hadn't made up your mind at that point? I think when she first came over there and asked for the help, I made up my mind, I would go take a look. Okay. But I don't know, I don't think I had decided anything else. I didn't purchase anything. I, didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't even sure she was telling me the truth. At that time. point, she just asked you to come help her. Or to help her. Or to take her, probably to help. Okay. Yeah, she asked, me for, she asked me for help, that is correct. I don't think, it was specified for sure what help it was, but I don't remember. And at some point, within the next day or so, you went over and saw what you saw. What as you told next us. One to three days, right. And then tell us about the conversation between you and Marjorie about what you would do next, either her or you or both you together. I don't know for sure how we got in there. We must have been talking. We have to get rid of the evidence and stuff like that, but I don't remember the specific conversation. But by, by that time, she'd already told you that she killed him. I would say yes, but I'm not sure because I told you. I don't remember when the first time she said. She might have even said it when she, and she, it doesn't make any difference, but I think it's probably. She might have said it the first time that she came over to my place and I let her in, but I don't remember for sure. I don't remember for sure. She might have just said he was dead and, and she wanted to avoid the thing that had happened before. 
what? chances are she wouldn't have, but I don't recall. For sure. It sounds like, I just want to be make this clear, it sounds like after you got there and you saw what you saw, you made the decision at that point to now help her. It could have been. It could have been. I don't know when it was. And we're so asking, sure. at that point, when you made that decision, who starts saying what about planning? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. She's did asking for help. Why do you decide to help her? Why did I decide? It? Because I felt sorry for her. You know, I tried to help her before with other things, not like this. and. Uh, I thought maybe I could do something, so I just thought about getting rid of the body, but to me getting rid of the body was taking it out of the house and, and getting rid of it, but not destroying it, but just like putting it in some safe place and I'd figure out, like maybe I'd figure out later on what to do with it, you know, not really seriously considering that something would have to happen mm -hmm. later. It was just like, uh, like, I don't know what the hell to describe it with. It was, it was just, I wanted, to, I wanted to get the body out of the house so she wouldn't get in trouble with She that. asked you to help her get rid of the body. I don't remember her specifically doing that. I, I am sure she did. Did she say, what do I do? I, I don't remember. That, would, that probably would have been either that period of time, and it was, I really don't recall for sure, that kind of stuff. Okay, well, what, what sets you in motion to, to start doing all these things? Uh, she came up to the house once, and I said, she, I, she must have asked me to do something, but I don't remember for sure what it was. Maybe it was clean up the place or something. I, I, I really don't remember that, okay? But I know uh, I asked her if she had the money with her because she carried this money around, and I told her to get rid of this money. This is the money, the bag of money that I got. And I told her before, get rid of it, put it in a safe deposit box, put it someplace else where nobody was going to get it, and she continued to carry it with her. So anyway, she brought the money in, we counted, I was going to use part of the money for the stuff, for, you know, supplies and stuff. And this is I, over at your house? Right, this is at my She house. brought this bag of money over. Would that be the, the visit after the initial visit when she made contact with you and said she It would have had to be, yeah. But I'm not sure if it was like the second or third visit or what. It was shortly after she made right, the initial visit. Right. To correct me if I'm wrong, and I don't know, maybe this would be more appropriate. The first night you went over there, you made the decision that you were going to help her. No, I think the the night that she came over to my place, I decided I would help her. But I'm not sure. I don't remember if I if I decided that night or if I decided I was just going to go Did over. Did you decide when block. you first observed the body? Is that when you decided? And so I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know. Did you take know. the body that night? When you first saw the body? When, is that when you started? I, I don't think so, because I would have had to buy tarps. I think the tarps, the green tarps were hers. Okay. I may have had the blue tarp in there, I can't remember. So I don't really know if it was the first night that I went over there that I did that. Uh, when, when yeah, you look, I, I could be blocking it out up above. That first night you go there when you see him lying on the bed? Okay, I didn't and believe he, that he was dead at first. I looked at him and I thought, you know, they're just kidding me or something like that. Because I'm looking and I'm expecting his uh, leg to move. And, and I could only see part of maybe like his hair. So it's kind of like down like this. And, and I can see maybe this much of his face here. So I, I, I couldn't really tell. And I didn't see any holes. I just saw those two like blood stains. But after a while it became apparent he was dead. Yeah. But I don't know how soon I actually pulled him off. I don't know if I did that that same night. You know, I could, I could make a supposition that I probably did it that same night, and then I had him in the car the next day and got him out that day and put him on the, on the cart, and then uh, either that day or the next day that I had bought the, uh, the freezer, but I'm not sure. Well, when you look at the body with Marjorie, she's looking at you and asking for some kind of sign, some kind of help or something. What do you tell her? I don't, she, what I, what he, no, no, I don't know what I told her. I don't know what I told her for sure. I don't know how she asked it. I don't know if I suggested or she suggested it. I don't know. You want to go to the bathroom or something like that? No. no okay. Why don't we go to when you do take the body? Okay. okay. Tell us what procedures you take. Okay. And who's you with you? Stuff I told you before. And who's, who's with you? Okay. I told that stuff before. I'll reiterate if you want me to. Okay. Uh, when I did take the body, it was lying there, and I, what I did was he was lying on some gray. Uh, bed covers, bed topping, and he was like at roughly an angle like this.
he wasn't overlapping like that. His feet might have been down to about there. He was sort of in a semi-fetal position. So what I did was I pulled up the gray uh, bed topping from here. I had put a green tarp down here, and I pulled them down onto the tarp by pulling the, uh, the bed topping onto it. The gray right. bed cover. Right. And uh, the, the, the gray, green tarping was way too big, I thought, so I cut it down. And what I did was I tried to taper. I had purchased some, uh, some duct tape and also some packaging tape and, and tried to just wrap it around to you know, keep it up so there wouldn't be any blood in case there was. Go ahead. Where'd you purchase that stuff at? Uh, I think it was Walmart. Uh, so then, after he was on it, and this place is crowded, and this isn't exactly the size, obviously, and this isn't the size. This is a little bit closer. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's still too big. Anyway, hold it down. I think I this this is not a door. This is just a doorway, correct? Right. All right. So I pulled them out like this, and there is a door here, but the door here swings this way. So I couldn't <coughs> pull them down the doorway like this. So I, and this was his head, we'll say right here. So I pulled them in this way. Oh, got this door open here and then pulled them down like this and took them down like this. Then I got down to the bottom of the stairs and Marjorie did not have the door open and she couldn't figure out how to get the door open, although she had lived there for years. Uh, she said they had done, had this work done recently, so she couldn't get the door open. So there was probably some blood down here and I had to go down. And I so while you're holding the body, she's trying to get the door open? Well, I, yeah, I pulled it down the steps and but she couldn't do it. So I, had, I think I had to pull the body back up and go open up the door so I could take him out. This was at nighttime, it was dark. The light came down, I think, from the stairway. So I took him out and then get down to the bottom of the stairs and, and there's a fence over here, the reddish fence, you guys saw that? Okay, so I went down the steps and then I couldn't go through there, so I went around to here like this and I had the back door of my truck open, both back doors, and I had a clear piece of plastic on there, heavy duty, maybe folded over something. I think it's wrapped around his body still. So I pulled him up on the green flap and had a hard time getting him in there because I couldn't handle the weight, but I finally got his body in there. Was she helping you load him in? No. She was, oh, she was inside. I think she was cleaning up some of the blood or something. She held the door open for you so you can get out? No. I just did it myself. So she was in, so she was inside. So it took a while before she got out there, and then uh, day or nighttime when you do this it. was nighttime. This is nighttime. Probably, I'm guessing probably closer to like 11 to one or something like that. And I don't think I don't remember if her car was up, or her Jeep was up at my place, or if her Jeep was someplace else. I can't remember. But I, all, I think all I took up that night, was, or that morning, whatever it was, whenever, whenever I was there, was just the body alone, and I don't think she was with me. And correct me if I'm wrong. Wait a minute, no, she was with me. She was with me because I was waiting for her, because she was cleaning up this, and I thought she was playing with her cats and dogs. So she went into the vehicle with me. And so she, we must have gone back to my place. She probably had her vehicle there, and she got in her vehicle and went wherever she went. Okay. And I just left my vehicle outside of the front. So I understand how the body's wrapped, as you recall it. Correct okay. me if I'm wrong. Go it's got a gray cover sheet around them onto a green. Yeah, it's not a sheet, but it's the cover. Cover, but that's yeah, right. right. Then there's a green tarp, which you cut down. Yeah, I cut it before. Put them on that. Right with the gray sheet first wrapped around them and now the green tarp. Right. And then it's secured with duct tape and packing tape. Well, it was supposed to be secured. It didn't secure them too well. Well, you did your right. best. You could. Thank you. Any rope at this no. point? No. Okay. That's how you drag them through the house with those two things wrapped around them. Right. The sheet or the cover right. and the tarp. Stairs. What well, you saw the stairs are roughly. This and then when you get to your van, there's another heavier tarp. Is that what you said? No, it's uh, clear vinyl plastic. Clear, it drops okay. like a heavy-duty drop sheet. And then that goes around. 
I actually put him on that. I didn't put it around him. I pulled it on him. But later, when I took him off, I think Back I at home. Right. Well, let's go to there. You go home then in the van with March. Okay. Right. And I Marjorie. Think, right. And I, she must have picked up her van and taken off. I have no idea where she went. Her jeep. Right. Okay. Because that's the only vehicle she's got to drive. She has a vehicle, but she's not driving it. Then, whenever it was the next day that I took the body off, probably, and put it on a cart. The cart is the one with the big metal wheel sitting on the side back there. The body stays in your van overnight. Why did it stay? No, the body it? stays in your van yes. overnight. Okay. Yes. And then Marge leaves. Well, Marge leaves and then the body stays in the van right. overnight. Okay. Correct. Correct. And then I think the next day is when I took the body off. I think I did it in the daylight. What I did is I just backed up close to the garage and opened up the doors and nobody could really see what was going on. So I took the body off. I put the body with all of the, the, the uh, clear vinyl was sort of around it. Okay. And I pulled that onto the cart. Okay. And then I think I wheeled it into the back to roughly where you guys found the body roughly. And then I think I went out and got the, uh, the uh, freezer. Same day. I, I think, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I would, I would imagine that I did. You know, you can find out, if you guys find out when there was that storm here, like at 10 o'clock at night or something like that, that's the day that it happened. Uh, you've already got the guy from uh, uh, Rex, so he can tell you what the date was that, that I bought it. We have, we have uh, a date on a receipt, right? and your name is on a receipt right. that was given to us by Rex. Right. August 13th. Okay. Uh, well, sound right? <laughs> probably is. I mean, if they wrote. Did you get a receipt from that? No, they sent me a receipt in the mail because okay. I forgot to pick one up. So the, if that's the duplicate, that's that's probably correct. I'll show this to you. And I show this to you. You agree that? I, uh, here's uh, an air conditioner. You buy an air conditioner there too? That's the air conditioner. That you replaced? Right. And then uh, it doesn't say freezer, it says Woo. That's the brand name of the freezer, Woods, I think. Woods, yes. $379? It's close to $400. If I show you these two documents, exactly these are copies provided to us by Rex. I think your name is at the top of them. Probably, yes. Would, these, would those prices indicate the, what you paid for the air conditioner and the freezer? Yeah. Okay, and let me see. If, uh, the date on it is August 13th, 2003. Yeah, no, I'm was, sorry. Uh, the date on the air conditioner is, uh, is September 7th. That one I would have got. That one I ha had a receipt for. This one was sent out probably three days later because I said I'd probably. They, I guess they called me up or something and told me that they had given it to me and I said, well, I'll probably be over. I think it was like a Thursday or Friday or a Friday or a Saturday that I would have. You want a calendar? Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. I was going to get my... No. Yeah. Thank you. Make sure that's a 2003. August 13th is a Wednesday. For the freezer? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, that's, I'm just going by what's on this on this receipt. I don't. I I told them that I would be down in two days to pick up the receipt and never never got down there. So they okay. sent it to me, and I think I got it like on Monday after that. So I was thinking like maybe I was supposed to maybe I picked it up on Thursday and Friday and Saturday I was supposed to be down there to pick up the extra receipt, but maybe it was like two days beforehand. I don't know. Okay. Um. So I'm um, clear. The body is now on a cart wheeled to the back of your garage. Yeah, close to the back. Okay. And every day for a second in time. Um, Just one of you. Excuse me. Any fear while you're gone getting this freezer of anyone coming into your garage, uh, namely Mr. Stockton, who resides within your residence? Yeah, because I told them to stay out because my tools would disappear and, and tools weren't getting replaced the way they were supposed to be for working on vehicles. So I just told them to stay out of the garage 
when you tell them this, you recall like a day or two before this? Oh, it's or probably a, a month before? or so. Probably a month or so. Before. And you were confident that he wouldn't go in there because he hadn't gone no, in there I wasn't since sure, you I wasn't sure. He must not have been around at the time when I was doing that. He must not have been there at that time. Do you recall time. what he might have been doing at that time? Might have been out. Oh, I know what it was. He was out with his girlfriend on a uh, trip to uh, the West. They were gone for okay. seven days. Okay, we understand that he like went. We yeah, already spoken yeah. to him. Okay, yeah, that's what it is. He was out there. Now, I want you to think about this. I'm going to run a couple of dates past you. The 13th, we've acknowledged the receipt. We'll just that's, try to follow okay, That's your receipt, first. but we don't know when the real, the first receipt, the original receipt was written. Right. as early as the 10th, you're saying. Yeah. Well, so no, it could have been later. I got it. I think I received the receipt on Monday. So, you know, I was. Th it seems to me that I had two days to get it, and that would have been like Friday and Saturday because they're open Saturday. So I probably picked it up on Wednesday or Thursday. And I ended up getting the receipt on Monday, I think. I believe the receipt would reflect the purchase was made on the 13th. That's what that date correlates. I don't know. We well, should call them up and ask them. They can tell you for sure. Well, let's go under that assumption because I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. We'll verify that. So okay. if you purchased the freezer on the 13th, I understand they went on this trip on the 16th, which would have been three days later. That wouldn't make sense then if he was going on a vacation, correct? Yeah, that is correct. Okay. So that may or may not have been the case. Here. Right. Regardless. But I had told him at least like a month ago okay. to stay out of the garage. Or anyone but else would visit you? Were you concerned of that? Ron Levy. But I would have just told him to go away. The transfer was fairly quick because the, the truck was close to the garage door. Okay. And you weren't gone too long. Only enough time to go get the freezer. Is that true? No, but, you know, Ron Levy would not have gone in there. The only one that would have gone in there would have been you know, uh, Stockton, Jay. And I told him to stay out, so I don't think he would. It was he didn't have to work on any vehicles or anything like that. And how long did it take for you to get the freezer after you left the cart with the body on top of it in the back of the garage? I don't know when for sure I went to get it. It's only like you know, like a, uh, maybe an hour altogether to go down and bring it back. And that's all you did. Yeah. And then you returned with it. Right. Okay. I just you brought the freezer back yourself. Yes. It was in the van. I think you told us that uh, they helped you, or they loaded it they for loaded you, two employees. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it fit in your van and you were right. able to bring it home. I just asked him about uh, the possibility of anyone seeing the body. He indicated that he was gone about an hour, just enough time to get the freezer and return. He had told Stockton not to go in the garage anymore because tools were coming up hey. missing prior to this. And I don't think he would have been there. I, I, I don't think he I thinks he might not even have been there, might have been on his vacation. Or or seen his girlfriend or something like that. And we're now he's returned with the But Stockton is not home at the time you're bringing your I don't, I'm not sure. I don't think so, but I'm not sure. You don't, you believe he never saw what, what you were doing? Right. That is correct. Now what I might have done is if he was working on the computer, because he's typing up the story and stuff. If he's working on a computer, he's not going to do anything else for a couple hours. But that just not going. Is he what? Did he work? He, he used yeah, to, he, he indicated he had, Yeah, he works with me and he does painting and he does mechanical stuff. He might have he been doing that house though. Well, you know, he does stuff. He'll like do the lawn and stuff around the house, or you know, cut down some of the limbs that need cut down or something. We're at where he returns with the freezer. Okay. You brought the freezer back. You Got unloaded it. by yourself. Did I lie? You unloaded by yourself. Yes. You had to make room for it where it was found. Yes. Nobody helped you with that. Nobody. The body's in the back of the garage at this time. Correct. Close to where I put the freezer. I had to move the body around and put the freezer around the back and then close to the wall. And then I had a, a real chore getting it into there because I had no idea what to expect. I tried to pick up the body, and, and it was like, I think, when I picked it up, it went up like, if you pick up like a sack of flour, sort of, you know, it moved like this, it sort of bends together, and I couldn't get them in there, so I, I had a couple of uh, pulleys that I was going to use for pulling up a ladder to get it out of the way, so I connected up, I think, one pulley and some, some of the rope, but I had plastic rope to pull them up and then I had to like, pull them up and then try to lift them with my arms and hold them, pull them like that so I finally got everything to the freezer. 
and there was a lot of blood all over, and uh, there were a couple of uh, drip out all over the floor in that yeah. in the garage. Yeah. Basically, I, it wasn't until I tried to pick them up and put them in there to the freezer. So uh, I put some of the blood got into the barrels. I don't know why the barrels were there. Not barrels. Uh, pails were there, like five-gallon pails. So I think one is orange and one is white. And uh, so then I, I got, I wiped the outside of the freezer off, uh, wiped the lid of the freezer off, and uh, there were some bags overhead with insulation. Is uh, I don't know what kind of cell, not cell effect. It's uh, flaky, flaky stuff. It's kind of like sort of like vermiculite type stuff, mm -hmm. and it had already broken. So I just knocked some of those, and it settled down. Over it. there was probably a a pool of blood around there or something. I don't remember what the size of it was. Like that. Where, and where did that end up? That's still there. Still there? Still there. Soaked up the blood and... I don't know. Soaked up the blood around, but it covered the blood. Covered the blood so nobody would see. Then I put some things. There was uh, a uh, snow blower and a tire and stuff and a, and a piece of plywood. I just moved those in front so they were in front of it. Covered the, uh, covered the freezer up with black plastic so it would be less noticeable. Right, so and you plugged it in so it run. So uh, your house guest may not have noticed it even if he came out there later. later. No. No way, no way he saw it? No. Okay. Uh, you bought the freezer and brought it over there. Uh, did you tell Marjorie, did, was that part of the plan? Uh, on the I, body or? I, I don't even know if I told her about it or not. As far as she knew, you had the body over there for safekeeping until you guys could decide what to do with it. I, I don't remember exactly how it went, but I think she just, I don't know if I told her I was going to get a freezer or not. That idea came to you. I had a, probably. Because you knew what was going to happen. <laughs> right. And it started, the body was going to decompose. Right. right. Okay. When did, when did you tell Marjorie you put him in the freezer? I don't know. I don't know if I told her ahead of time I was going to, and then told her that I did, or just told her I was going to, or if I didn't tell her at all until later on. Somewhere along the line, she knew he, he was in the freezer. At some point, you told her. <clears throat> okay. The rope you used to use the pulleys and to help you Correct. lift them in there. Did that stay with the body in the freezer? No, that's uh, I think it's on the kitchen table. The kit, the actual rope you used is on the kitchen no, table. No, the kitchen table. No, the rope I used is destroyed. Probably that probably went into the garbage. I imagine it did. Did he, okay, did anything else go with the body into the freezer other than the bed sheet, the green tarp, the clear, thick vinyl throw-down plastic? Uh, I don't think so. I tape, don't think so. duct tape, and yeah, I don't think tape. So. Maybe some of the rope is in there, but I don't think so. I, it, may be, it may be in there. If you see yellow poly, poly rope, that might be in there. That should be the only thing. Yellow poly rope ended yeah. up in there? Yeah. That maybe. was helped to secure. Right, that's what I wrapped around the body to pull it up and stuff. Okay. He's not sure he said. Okay, right. that's fine. Yeah. Right. I got um, and it, just to back up a little bit more, you remember a white t-shirt on him, any other clothing I items? I think you he had a white t-shirt. I think he had printing on also. A what? A printing, you know. A printing on the white t-shirt? Not a printing, just like letters. You know, some kind of... Any other items on his person? When you wrap them, when you pull socks them. and the pants that he had, whatever the color pants were, I don't know. Pants? Yeah. Underpants or no, no, long no. pants? Long pants. And you don't, okay. I think they were brown or gray. Or, I think they were probably brown, but I don't recall. Maybe like wool. Okay. Which doesn't make sense because it was summertime, but. Okay, he's in a freezer. Okay. Covered up. <coughs> He's in the freezer, covered up. At some point, Marjorie knows what you, what steps you took at your your house. She, oh, she knows that he's in a freezer. I think <laughs> I don't think she knew exactly where. She might have known that he was in a garage. She might not have. I don't know if I said she he was in a garage or not. All right. The last thing, the night be, the night before she leaves, after you you and her travel to your house with the body in the in the back of your van, she gets in her vehicle and leaves, and then. The next day, that's when you go and get the freezer and put him in there by yourself. I think. I'm what happens? Sure. What happens after that? Now he's in the freezer. When's the next time you see Marjorie or talk to her? And what happens after that? I don't know. Sometime in there, but I don't know how soon. We must have discussed about you know cleaning up the place and getting rid of the evidence and things. How much like money that. of the sixty thousand were you in possession of, or maybe you were in possession of all of it during this whole course of time? Yeah. You had the bag the whole time. Yeah. 
what happens to the bag? Where is it now? Or when did uh, it finally leave your possession? I put it in the basement, then I took it out and I put it in a safe deposit box later on. And then when I, when uh, I had committed or uh, considered committing suicide because of, you know, like shortly before this stuff hit the fan with the uh, Saturday thing, and what I did was I sent it out to some of the friends of mine who I thought could use some of the money. I mean, I had no use for the money. Well, let's back I, up. I was going to be dead. Okay, let's back up. Safety deposit box, where? Uh, credit union on uh, 8th and uh, Siri City School District Credit Union. Box number 933. Right now there's a box in there that all it's in Your there. Your name? Yes. Know. There's like three CDs in there right now. If you want the key for it, Which or no. location of the credit union? Eighth and something or other. Uh, West Eighth. Yeah, West Eighth. Eighth and Green Garden. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what it is, Green Garden. Or if it's not Green Garden, it's that one year. They it's on Green Garden right and place. Bayfront Highway. Where the Bayfront Highway yeah, cuts across. Yeah, that's it. That's okay. the one. And you put it in there approximately when? Maybe use a. I put it in the basement and I said, this is not a good place to have it. And, you know, I, so I put it into the uh, credit union. I just got the credit union box shortly before that. And I think maybe within a day or two after that, I came in and put the money in. I don't think I put it in the same day. But you can take a look at the record and see when I first got it. Was it after you put the body in the freezer? Oh, yes. Was it? Uh, I don't know how much after. Oh, probably. Probably consider after, considerably after, because I had the money, but I kept it in the basement of the house. Then you decided to put it in the box, yeah. correct? And then when did you take it out of the box? Uh, well, I used to go into it to get money to, you know, to operate from, but then I took it out when I was going to commit suicide. I said, get rid of it, send it off to people who can use it. You remember that day you took it out? Saturday you made the call, but I don't know how much prior to that you had these thoughts. Probably three, probably two or three days. Sixty thousand went in the security box, or do you know a rough estimate? Cause you counted it, it was, up. It was probably yeah, but I spent it stuff like that. I don't remember what we counted. I'm guessing it was probably close to sixty. And how much do you estimate that you spent from? the beginning to the end? I don't of know. It? Maybe two, three thousand dollars, something like that. Okay. Now you send, you take it out and you send it off to who? Uh, Dennis Melquist. Who? Dennis Melquist. Do you have... Uh, 8130 Pagan Road. He's to you, a friend? Since second grade. How much did you send him? I didn't count the exact amount, but I think his was like roughly $10,000. <clears throat> How do you send it? Uh, mail, U.S. mail. Just an, an envelope? Uh, soft envelope. Who else? Sent one to Mark Golden, but he didn't bother opening his up or anything. He just said, what the hell is this? And I said, give it back to me. Because, you know, I expected... He came to you with the envelope that he would received I in the mail? I saw it because I, I dropped off a uh, saw in his place, or drill. He never opened it? No. He doesn't know what, what was in it. You said give it back, he gave it back. Without any questioning. You didn't tell him? How much did you send him that was never opened? I think it was around probably ten thousand dollars. Who else? Uh my brother. And that was probably around Twenty or thirty, twenty or thirty, someplace in between. Who's your brother? John Rossi. In his residence. Sixty, seventy-eight Appleman Road. <coughs> Is that Mill Creek? Yes. And I also sent twenty thousand to a friend of mine in New York. First name Marshall, M A R S H A L, Strax, S T R A X. 
don't know the exact address. It's in Nanuet. Nanuet, New York? Nanuet, New York. Nanuet. N-A-N-U-E-T. How much? About 20000 I'm sorry. About 20000 I think roughly. Do you have phone numbers? Do you know them offhand? Uh, like the guy in New York, maybe that will help us in. You don't know the address. No, I usually get them on my, uh, on my cell phone or pull up on my computer. So I can get them. His for number's you. on your computer? Yeah. Dennis Phelps was 866 0068. These guys don't 866. know. 866 0068. Okay. These guys don't know what the stuff's all about. They know the money's not hot. That's all they know if they open it. Uh, my brother's is, I think, 824-6413, but I'm not sure. 824-6413, I think. Okay. And Mark Golden. Okay, well, he doesn't have it, though. Still on his number? Yeah. 459. 4154. And all this money, the 60000 that was in the bag. Whatever it was, yeah, it was probably close. I just this grabbed, I just grabbed, you know, I tried to give like 10 to 1, and I was, I wasn't planning to be around long, so I just But this bag of money came from Marjorie. Yeah. This is the leftover stuff. This is the leftover money that wasn't stolen. The other guy well, according, according, according to, to her. According to her, it was not. And she gave it to you for safekeeping. Not exactly sure how it goes. Here's the situation. She said she needed ten thousand dollars back. Okay, because she was going to have an operation on her teeth. And other than that, it was like mine to do it as I want. So you know, I don't know if it's considered pay or she wanted me to hold on to it. She was. And she, she gave wasn't the, expecting any of it back. She gave it to you. I don't know if she gave it to me just to she hold it. She wasn't explicit with what she no, said? No, She just... No. But that was your understanding. Oh, it's yours I, to keep, and you're helping her well, out. Uh, yeah, I, if I needed it, I used it. And then when it came down to the time... You, uh, didn't, you so thought she didn't expect it back until she come up with this 10000 for her. No, operation. no, no. She told me about the 10000 ahead of time. Okay. So I knew that I needed to keep whatever I did, whatever I used it for, anything I did at all, I had to make sure that I kept ten thousand dollars. Did she give you that? Did she give you that sixty grand in the bag before you moved the body or after you moved the body? Don't know. Don't know for sure. Is it fair to say around the time that you yes. moved the body? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Probably within like three days or four days, something like that. You assume that. this is no. Wait, wait a minute. Hold it. Go ahead. I had to have gotten it before I got the. Uh, in the freezer. So I did have it before I got the freezer. So that's all I can tell you. You got the body the day before you got the freezer or two days well, before. I'm not sure about so that. Or around you know, that time. If you can figure that out, it's gonna be before I got the freezer. Or the day I got the freezer maybe. But I don't think so. I think I think I probably had the money before I went out to get the freezer. So that would have to be somewhere around after I took his body out. Okay. Okay. You know, plus or minus Before you got the freezer, and add, but after she asked you for help. Yes. Okay. That's for sure. Is it your impression? With I don't want the words in your mouth or. or <laughs> you go ahead. And ask whatever. You know, I'm not going to let you do that. Just uh, did she tell you, "Hey, or take this money for helping me," or take this money to help you know she for, for your help in getting rid of the body, or what? She did. I don't think she specified. All I remember is she said she wanted. Ten thousand dollars back for the operation, All right. and it was like handed to me. And, and I don't remember if she said anything else or she didn't say anything else. So right. the rest was for your yours to keep. Do that was your understanding when she gave it to you. That you're gonna, it was yours to do it with whatever you want. I think that's what. You well, said. I don't know if it was mine to do with as I pleased, but it was mine to do with for part of the stuff that I was gonna need, and you know I just used some of it for my own anyhow. You knew this money was gonna was for helping her out. And no, it part could, of it could, was no, it could, part of it could have been because she didn't want anybody to find out about it. I'm not sure. I I really don't know. Okay. Well, if she's telling you to go ahead and use it as you as you see fit, then well, I don't think she said it like that. She just said like, "Here's the money" or something like that. I don't recall for sure. All right. All right.
Okay, um, the, the, the money thing. So you mail all this out. You obviously took the one back from Mark Golden. Right. Because you ran into him when you dropped off a saw. Right. The drill, others, drill, they drill. 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 Okay, I said saw drill. I, I think, think I did that. I corrected it. Okay. Okay, and then the others, did they look you up, call you up, and say, hey, what's this for? They all did? Yeah. What was well, the, the, the last guy in New York, I don't know if he's received his yet or not. What did Milquest say? Uh, he didn't want anything to do with it. I told him the money wasn't hot. He says, I don't want anything to do with it. He says, I'll hold it for you if you want to. And I said, okay. Okay. Your brother? Uh, he didn't know what the hell was going on either. So I just said, look, this is money. It's legitimate. And I put some in there for my ex-girlfriend. I said, this is for her because she's gone with me, for, had gone with me for 15 years. Which and, she's now with him? No, she takes care of her father. He was going to pass it on? He was going to give it to her. Right. Okay. So he has approximately, I think like 26 or 36, something like that. And his response, other than, I don't know what I'm going to do with he it. He doesn't know what the hell to do. He's hanging on to it? Yeah. Okay. And you don't know about New York? No. Uh, I probably wouldn't have, there may be a message on my answering device at home. Or it might be one of my cell phones, but I don't have either one of those. I didn't ask this, but I gotta ask it. Were there any letters with the money explaining it that you put in there with the money? No. The only thing it said was like, uh, I probably won't be here. Use this as you want. Something to that effect. Did you write that to everybody? Yeah. Did you write it or did you type it out? Hand printed it. You hand printed it. Hand printed it. Okay. Anything else sent other than money? Maybe that's a quick message in those letters. Sorry. I'm Any other items? You got a, you no, got a letter and money, and that was it. That was it. Okay. You take a break. Okay. Now, you have these thoughts of contemplating suicide. I think you stated that. But this stuff's all sent. Right. Now we're a couple days before you call in the safe place. What occurs before you call? Actually made the call. That's the day of the call. So yeah. The what, uh, what all of a sudden we get these thoughts? Why? What precipitated yeah. the situation? Yeah. Okay. Marjorie, I met with her somewhere around. She hadn't seen me. I had taken off like I think the day before, and was when I was committing suicide, and, and I went out to Warren, and I said, you know, can I do it? I couldn't do it. Uh, so I came back, I spent all day out there, and I guess she had left a message, real nasty messages about head games and stuff like that. And she wasn't able to get in the air in her tire, which I have to put in almost every day, 10 pounds of air in one tire. So I think I got her, she said she was gonna contact me the next day and I better talk to her or else. And uh, then I think it was actually two, she didn't call me the next day. So I think the next day was probably Saturday, and that was the Saturday where the uh, she informed me about the PFA being served on her uh, boyfriend on Wednesday, so we had to get rid of the body like immediately. I thought, well, maybe we can postpone it till Sunday or something like that. You know, I can figure out what to do, but she wanted it done that day. So that's how we started picking up the materials, and I made some suggestions. I had made the same suggestions before, but I just reiterated and you know, had some new stuff and tried Can you to go over those? Just roll briefly. Oh, okay. Uh, suggestions. Basically cut up the body and, and uh, get it as small as pieces as possible, smash it, whatever we had to do to get small pieces and then just throw the tiny pieces away, throw them in a lake, throw them in a, in a river someplace where they wouldn't be found. And uh, made some suggestions of how to do it. And but she, how did she respond to that? She was okay. She, at one time there, she started saying she was like, she didn't like him. She didn't want him in a freezer, and she didn't want him destroyed or cut out. But and maybe, she, but she didn't want him buried because if you bury him, then you can find him. 
no matter where you bury them. And, you know, so she's going back and forth with some of that stuff like she had uh, sorrow about the fact that it was done. But she had to have it done anyhow. She didn't want to bury them. She doesn't, didn't want to cut them up. Well, she was getting emotional then. It's like, you know, I loved the guy, you know, but he, he was into this and he was into that and he screwed me with the money and, you know, back and forth like that. I, so, so then what? Basically, we started, I got a list together and we started picking up supplies and I tried to uh, bullshit as long as I could so I could stall. You got a list together? What was that list cons comprised of? Uh, tarps, uh, uh, meat grinder, uh, a, a bucket or something so that it's in the back of the truck so that we can wash off or whoever did the stuff. Uh, did you ever buy an ice grinder? What? Did you ever, uh, I, what'd you say? Ice? Ice crusher. Yeah. Right. These are a list of things that, things that you might need. Ice crusher, yes. meat grinder. Yeah. You made an actual yeah. list, handwritten? Yeah. Where's the list? Probably gone. Uh, maybe it's in the truck. I don't know. I think, I, I think no. I think no. I think I threw it out. I think I threw it out. Did you ever, ever end up buying the cleaning supplies that you were talking about? You said you made a list of supplies. Oh, I didn't have cleaning supplies down there. I don't think. Okay. I already had. I had purchased some uh, some concrete can cleaner at I think it was Lowe's or Home Depot for cleaning up the garage from the cement, but I never used them. Because, you know, I said to myself, I'm not going to do this shit because I'm not going to go through with it. You know, and I had figured either, like, just kill myself or, or, you know, turn her into you guys and then figure out which is the best way for me to do it. Okay, and while purchasing these items, which you on made Sunday? a list of. On Sunday? On well, Saturday? Saturday, I'm sorry, on Saturday, right. right. Did she go with you, and what vehicle did she you use? She was in the vehicle. She was in my vehicle. Okay, in your van. In my van. And, and you went where? Home Depot, Lowe's, Kmart. And I had called this guy as a lawyer. I don't remember what his name was. What was his name? Chief of City. And just, just kidding. Uh, I had given him a call, and he says, I'll call back. I, I, I could, he couldn't get a hold of me on uh, Friday, I think it was, because it was too late. No, on Friday, though, originally. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Right. You called Gene on Friday? I called him on Friday, because uh, I wanted to find out, you know, what, what my legal, legal ramifications were here. And he wasn't there, and then he, he left a message stating that he would be in maybe on Saturday, I think around, oh, maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I left my name, and and he said he's going to possibly call me the next day, and he called when Marge was in the truck. So I looked at the phone and said, oh, shit, man. I put the phone back in, because there was no way I could talk to Marge, to uh, Mr. Full City, with, with Marge being there. If I remember correctly, he called me Friday. I got the message Saturday. I called you back okay. Saturday. I told you I was going to be at the office for a few minutes, but I okay. ended up right. down Sunday. Right. Yeah, so I, I, call, I went into Kmart and called him up and said something. I said, the shit has hit the fan. Okay. You left a right. message there with him? Yes. Okay. What time did you go to Home Depot, Lowe's, and Kmart? Saturday. Approximately. There are, there are probably... Oh, uh, Pennsylvania yeah. State Police has a bill. So approximately, yeah. okay, I, let, let's backtrack. I, I picked up the stuff at uh, the ice crusher at uh, Kaplan's out in Waterford. That was like just at 5 o'clock. Okay? Marge went in for that. I went in for the meat grinder. I said, you go in for the ice crusher. So she went in for the ice crusher. Marge went in and bought it. Yes. So at 4.30, <coughs> excuse me, we were at Kmart's going to buy the tarps, and I think your call was probably at 4.15 or something like that, or 4 o'clock. Uh, close to it. Yeah. 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 You're four. going backwards. I'm going backwards. Okay, that's, that's right. Fine. That's, that's fine. my reference point. That's right. So, Mr. Placidi probably called somewhere between 4 and 4.15 and, and 3.45. Uh, 